Hello, and welcome to Global Wellness for All podcasts. My name is Lale Hancock, and I'm going to be your host every week, every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Lisbon time as we do this journey and adventure of wellness in all parts of our lives. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Global Wellness for All podcast. Um, my name is Lale Hancock, and I'm your host. Today, I have a very special guest for us, Mary Case. Hi, Mary. Hi, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mary um, is a access consciousness certified facilitator. She's an energetic body worker. She's a retired elementary school music teacher, a professional violinist, a, a triathlete, and so much more. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to bring Mary um, to be a guest with us today is just to have this discussion of being different. Um, so many of us walk around um, thinking that we're just like everyone else. And when we're not, we go into wrongness instead of really celebrating the difference that we actually are. So Mary, welcome. And I'm so grateful that you are here and I'm so looking forward to the conversation that we can have together about being different and not being wrong. And I love this conversation because how many of us go through our whole life thinking that there's something wrong with us or something is broken or something has to be fixed and how much of our school systems are set up, the way that they're set up is all based on you get it right or you get it wrong or you fit in or our economic systems or businesses, really everything is based on fitting in. And if you don't fit into something, then you realize that you're wrong or you're different. And so different becomes wrong, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things to look at is everywhere in our lives where we're making ourselves wrong, if actually every wrongness is a strongness, then what could show up for us? What could change? Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, Mary. Everything that we have thought was a wrongness, what if it's a strongness? I, I mean, um, I learned this 10 years ago in Access. And I have to tell you, every day, I actually perceive the gift of this question in such a different way. You know, there's so many things that are so fun and ease for me that seems so crazy for others that even until yesterday, when I was in a uh, choice of possibilities um, class with Simone Millicis, that I realized, you know, one of my ways of um, doing things different, creating is truly from play and from curiosity and moments of asking all those questions, how people would make me wrong. Because why are you asking so many questions? Why are, you, why are you going left while everyone else is going right? And so like, it's so funny, like realizing it's not about your age. It's not about your job. It's not about where you lived. Each one of us is so unique. And each one of us is going to have our difference. And it, depending on where you are, that difference is going to be so unique to the people around you that it may seem as though your difference is a wrongness instead of, wow, the gift that you bring having a different perspective, the gift that you bring by asking a question no one else is asking. And what can that actually contribute to creating something different, to allowing a new possibility to actually come alive? So 
you know, I, I'm just curious with you, you know, I've loved watching you on um, the different chats that we have of even your triathlon, you know, like, like, tell us more about like you discovering the difference of you and then using it to your advantage. And I love that you're bringing it into the idea of sports because that's yeah. where I really started to see where all of the ways that I would make myself wrong was actually a strength. So for example, you know, my whole life I've had numbers in my head. There's always counting in my head. In, in this world, we might call that a form of OCD. And mm -hmm. it was always there. And sometimes I was like, you know, like, is there something wrong with me? Like, do I need to talk to someone about this? Like, what is this? And then I started to see both in my sports and in my music, how that is what was really my strength. So for example, in my sport, they actually called me the metronome because a big part of uh, the sport of triathlon is uh, having this certain cadence. That's like a rhythm to your cycling and then a rhythm to your swimming and a rhythm to your running. And there's certain ratios that give optimal performance when you have certain ratios. So there were a lot of people out there that required fancy gadgets and would wear fancy gadgets and would plug into programs. And for me, because I had this metronome going in my head at all times, I was able just to lock into whatever that cadence or rhythm would be that was required. That was total ease for me. Mm. Wow, Mary, and so many people. Up. Yeah, so many people listening would be like, what are you talking about, Mary? Like, how do you make that work? <laughs> so talk, talk more about this magic gift that you be. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, we all have these different and unique capacities. And in my case, it's like this counting, this rhythmic capacity. Uh, as a professional violinist, I was always hired, not because I was the most outstanding player, the most brilliant flamboyant player, but I was always the one in an orchestra that could be relied upon for the steadiness of beat which is a really important quality when you're, you're a musician. So I didn't get that until like 10 years ago when I started really looking at, you know, different not wrong and all everything this was. Then mm -hmm. I started to get that that was my unique capacity with numbers that allowed me to have that rhythmic solidity that was required to be a really great orchestral player. So it's like this, and, and for me, literally, it's numbers in my head all the time. So if, if I'm cooking, for example, like every scoop, I'm counting every scoop. If I'm walking up the stairs, I'm counting the stairs. Like it's mm. always present there. So that's very different. And definitely for a lot of my life, I thought this is really weird. This is wrongness. And now it just makes me smile because I totally get that that's a capacity and I'm able to use that to my advantage. Mm. You know, it's so funny because um, one of the things for me personally, even when I do meditation, is I always have thoughts in my head, you know, um, like, you know, it, in the shower, you know, my best thinking, <laughs> it's usually in the shower. It didn't matter what my day was going to look like. I could always come up with different possibilities, different options, different solutions. As soon as like I hit water and it, it is one of those things that for a long time, I didn't see it as a problem. And then I met others who were like, wow, are you a head tripper? Like you're always thinking instead of actually like being present with things. And I realized like, no their way of being present with something was very different than my idea of being present with something. And when yeah. I am, when I was engaging with whatever that problem or situation was, or what we were trying to create or whatever, I have the ability to communicate and hear from them. So, you know, like, let's say um, I was building a business. Well, the business talks to me. I can hear the business talking. And most people would say, well, that's crazy. But no, that was one of the ways that is one of my, like you said, strongness. But 
it doesn't have to be that that's how it works for you. It doesn't have to be how it works for anybody else. And when I stopped, it's so funny, like for a while it didn't matter. And then I was like, oh, maybe this is something that I have to get rid of. Maybe I need more quiet in my head to be able to do things. And I realized like when I went against what is natural, what is innate for me, what is fun and easy for me, I'm actually trying to do it like other people. It doesn't work. So by trying to make it go away was actually my way of making it a wrongness instead of being like, ooh, how much more fun can I have with it? And how else can I use this ability, this capacity to my advantage and to the advantage of the business or the project or whatever else that's going on? So I really wonder, like people listening now or listening in the future, like, what is it that is actually a gift? And, and, and part of the uniqueness of you that maybe you have been making wrong because of what someone said or did. And if you would be willing to flip the wrongness and say, okay, what if this is one of my superpowers? Like how much more fun can I have today? And what other ways can it contribute to what I'm gonna be doing today, what I'm creating for now in the future or anything else. And what you might perceive is actually, you know, that gift. And I love your example about the meditation is anyone who has, has worked with, you know, formal meditative practices can maybe relate to that like, like for me, I can't stop the, the thoughts in my head. I think it's just, they're always there. And that is a capacity. Yeah. So we could make ourselves wrong for not being able to have that stillness in our brains, or we can see that that's a capacity for nonverbal communication. And this is a whole different topic, but it's our capacities to actually hear the thoughts of others and what's going mm -hmm. on in their worlds and tapping into that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I found actually is I do these um, different kind of, we can call them meditation, but they're not the traditional meditation. But like when I engage with molecules around the universe and I'm doing an energy pool, or if I'm um, just having this conversation of like a symphony, you know, a symphony of possibilities or something like that, like I can be that space of relaxation and one where I don't have to figure it out, but yet the engaging may include words, may include actions. And so I, this is one thing that, you know, I'd like to kind of put out there is find what works for you. You know, um, my ex-husband, Peter, he loved cycling you know how you were talking about this triathlon and like the, the rhythm with it, like when he was on his bike and he was, you know, going up a mountain or he was on the street or whatever he was riding, like that's when he really was being connected to everything in the universe. The amazingness of the trees, you know, the land, the mountain or whatever. And that's where he found his creativity. Like he had you know, the ability to shut out all the noise and allow his own perceiving and receiving and, and his own thoughts of creativity. So, you know, meditation might work for some people. Cycling may work for others. Being a triathlete might work for others. Swimming might be something else, but find what is that thing that actually allows you to have that space of relaxation and receive. And there is no one right answer, you know, you will find that different thing. So I'm curious, Mary, even with becoming an athlete, a triathlete, like what were different things that you tried and realized that this was actually what was fun for you? Well, outside of the world of sports, I see where I bring it into everything, like everything mm -hmm. in my life. Now mm -hmm. I see, you know, even right down to, I used to make myself wrong for having a messy desk, for example. 
Mm -hmm. And then I see how when I take that wrongness away and realize that whatever I require to find is available, it's right there. And then sometimes I choose to clean the messy desk, but it's willingness for me to be me, uniquely me, and to work in a way that works for me and take all the wrongness away. Yeah. So different, not wrong. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there maybe listening who might have labels like ADHD, for example. Mm -hmm. Attention deficit is just that capacity to be present in, you know, everywhere simultaneously. And when you get that that's a capacity, for example, my capacity as a teacher and a music, musical teacher, especially being in front of a large, large orchestra and be in the worlds of every individual in that orchestra and know exactly what is required at any given time. If I didn't have that capacity, which I could make wrong, I wouldn't be able to function in that environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how often even like, um do we have it that even the little things like for me I love nurturing people you know having them feel good you know taking good care of them whether it's a, a great dinner together or if it's I see someone just putting like a even a blanket on top of them or whatever it is and even that you know where people would say oh you know you you mother you mother so many things and even that I had made wrong you know, like, oh, is that empowering people if I'm mothering them, you know, like, but I just wonder, like, how often in a day are we judging ourselves for who we are, what we're doing instead of the, wow, each, each part that comes up of who you're being that day, what if every single part of it, even the part of you being mad and yelling, like, what if that is one of your strongness? Because so often, even, you know, people get mad because someone yell at them or whatever. But what if it wasn't yelling? What if you flipped it and were like, okay, what is that energy they were opening during that moment? You know, because sometimes when things are stagnant, things don't change. And sometimes you need a little more intensity. Sometimes you need that more aggressive presence. And it may come in a form of what appears to be yelling. And I'm not selling go around yelling at everybody. I'm just saying that sometimes we actually are being and doing exactly what's required to create the changes that are required. And if we don't make ourselves wrong for anything, the being mean, being mad, or nurturing someone, or running, or whatever it is, and every single one of them we were grateful for, I just wonder what kind of world we would have. Because gratitude and judgment cannot coexist. They're on two different energetic frequencies. So you can't be grateful and judge at the same time. So what gratitude could you have for you today and for every action you've taken until now? And now what else is available? What else is possible? What else can you choose? And that is dropping all resistance. Right. If you're yeah. not resisting and you're not react, if you're not resisting and you're not reacting to something, then you can be completely present with it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not Mary, making you talk, anything wrong. Yeah. Can you talk more about being present with it? Because I, it's so different in a, you know, being present in the work environment and then you know, what people would talk about even in that meditative state. So like, what, what is being present for you? Well, for me, being present is a willingness to be in what we call being in the question. So asking mm -hmm. a question. So instead of going automatically to something is wrong or terribly wrong or broken, we start mm -hmm. to ask a question. And I have a really dynamic example of this. I work with a nonverbal autistic girl and she has this, what they would call a behavior where she will take something from the apartment where she lives and she'll either throw it away or she will relocate it. 
Mm -hmm. So when I was getting really present with what that is, instead of saying, oh, there's something wrong here and we need to fix this behavior and we need some therapy or whatever that is, I started to really look at what it was that was occurring. And I started to see that she was actually depositing the things she was taking from her apartment in front of the doors of other people that really required something. So for example, there was a, a young woman in distress and we didn't know that. We didn't know the person or the situation or anything. But because this young woman, nonverbal autistic young woman had that capacity to be aware of what was going on in someone else's world, the only way she communicated that to us was to relocate these items on the doorsteps literally of the person that was in distress. Wow. And it yeah. was like when we started to realize the pattern behind the behavior and the gift that that was, it just exploded really everybody's universe. Yeah, so amazing. I mean, yeah. And there you go, right there, you know, when we even say non commutative um, autism, which is not really true. They are communicating, they're just not communicating the way you and I would say we're talking you know? And so yes. that's that gift of what is each person's gift and how are they expressing that gift versus, um, you know, there's only one size fits all and we all have to talk, you know? Um, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. I remember a story with a friend who is a, um, a physical therapist and she worked with a lot of kids who were diagnosed with autism and on, on the different scale, you know, and one of them was the same that was diagnosed as a non-communicative um, autistic young man. And he was in school and he was just having a major tantrum. Like he was screaming he was throwing things and um, what parents and everyone else was defining as a temper problem and an anger problem. And then she started working with him and started communicating with him in different ways and realized he was in distress because he was trying to bring light to the fact that the teacher wanted to commit suicide. And, and no one would have known that, you know what I mean? It wasn't linear to his actions, but what was actually happening was that was his way of drawing attention to what he was perceiving the teacher had in her head. And um, the teacher ended up not committing suicide, but it was just such an opening to see how, you know, we're so used to looking at things from one angle instead of what is this information and, and what else can we contribute to it, you know? Yeah. And that is different, not wrong. Like when we're willing to look at a temper tantrum and if that's not wrong, if we don't make it a wrongness, it's like, what is this child, young adult, whoever it might be, what are they trying to communicate to us through yeah. their actions? Yeah. And I would say pets too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Children, you know, uh, we had this three-year-old in our class yesterday and it was so funny. Like she started having a tantrum at the end of day one and um, mom was like frantic. She was like, what do I do? Do I stay in the class? Do I take her back? And she, the mom asked the question to Simone and it was so funny the daughter knew class was over and people weren't really receiving anymore. And to her, it was like, okay, class is done, let's go. <laughs> but to everyone else, we had to be good students to stay until the teacher said, okay, class is finished. <laughs> so like her tantrum actually opened the conversation of guys, you know what? Class is finished. Like all of you are pretty fried right now. <laughs> and go have fun tonight and we'll see you in the morning. But it is like how often we have put things in the category of something is good, something is bad, it's right, it's wrong, instead of everything is information and it's an awareness, you know? 
And how can we apply that to learning more information and more awareness and, and, and then applying it to whatever it is that we have going on? So Mary, tell me, um, you retired from, well, there's never a retirement, but um, you facilitate classes, you're a violinist, you're a triathlete, like, tell us more of what do you have coming up and how can people engage with you? To find me, I have a website, um, www.marycaseenergetics.com. Mm -hmm. which gives a pretty good picture of all the different areas of my life. So you can see sports in there and you'll see music in there and you'll see the body classes that I teach with access consciousness. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say a whole lot about, I do have some contract work with um, autistic children as well. Um, but you, that's a very good way to find me. Awesome. And we'll have it also in the bio and in the bottom part of the um the show as well so that people can just click and get to you um and this is a particular interest of people to look at the x-men classes that are offered by access consciousness um mm -hmm. there's x-men intros and one days that i teach but we really look at this topic of different not wrong um, as it applies to your life and maybe the lives of those around you and it, it's a very expansive creates a lot of space when you start to look at this in a little bit yeah. more detail. Well, you know, in access, we look at everything as a capacity. And like you said, um, even people who have been diagnosed with different things, OCD, you know, um, autism, you know, ADD, ADHD, or anything else, like truly as a gift, like the X-Men powers. Um, and I'll tell you, my sister, well, my, my nephew was diagnosed with ADHD. His mom was never diagnosed, but she knows she's ADD. And for me, I was the great student who didn't have any, I would say in this reality, learning problems. You know, I was a straight A student and I learned everything quickly. But one of the things that I realized is actually I am an X-Men. You know, I do have ADD capacities. I do have OCD capacities. I do have ADHD capacities. I do have autistic capacities, even though in this reality, it's not what I was diagnosed with, but it's all these things like autistic, you know, um, they're able to, you say socks and they're able to tap in and engage with socks all around the world. Like it's the capacity of, um, getting away from the limitations of what we call is like the left, left brain, right brain, and actually being able to receive with everything. So I really wonder if we stopped going based on what this reality has the definitions and the labels, how can we use what we are, like our capacities, our abilities, our talents, our strengths, truly to make them even greater it's not about you you got them and now what it's like you got them and now how else can you use them to your advantage what else is possible with these gifts that you've never considered before so if you haven't considered it please check out the x-men um accessconsciousness.com slash x-men um and yeah, and, and check out Mary's website um, as she provides um, introductions um, and one day classes, because it's, it's amazing what each of these classes, I actually brought X-Men and other capacities with this into Autism Speaks and to other um, um, schools and places, um, just even for the teachers and the parents to see there, there's an even more of a gift than they realize. So I really wonder what else is possible, Mary, that we haven't considered yet. And thank you, Lale, for getting this out here. I mean, just the message that different is not wrong and that everything you've decided is a wrongness is actually a strongness.
Yeah. And, and you know, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> it's really interesting because I'll tell you, like, even something very small, like, I'm the only one in my family with brown eyes. <laughs> I was the only one who was more of a science oriented person um, than the rest of my family. And so like even those moments as a child that you felt different and were trying to fit in to be like everyone else, what if there's another possibility there? Cause I'm realizing more and more truly the gift of everything that is different and how the world requires more than ever our difference. Being the same is not working, not for us, not for our bodies, not for our lives or what we desire to create. And it's not working for the earth either. So when you are willing to be you and stop judging you, there is this other space of possibility that becomes available that truly has never existed before. So Mary, I am so grateful for you. I'm so glad that you were here. And uh, truly, what else is possible we've never considered before um, with being different. Thank you so much, Lolly. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. And just know we've changed the show a little bit, as you know. Um, doing it every week um, really doesn't work. I really follow the energy and bringing us amazing guests and different kinds of subjects and topics. So just follow us on uh, Global Wellness for All slash podcast. And you know, we're everywhere on uh, iTunes and everywhere else, Global Wellness for All podcast. And if you would like to be a guest, uh, please message us. You can go to the global wellness for all.com slash contact page and uh, let us know the message that you'd like to share with the world. Thank you, Mary. And thank you. These amazing tools of access consciousness and the gift of each of us being us. So be you and change the world. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here with us, whether you were listening or watching we are so grateful for you and we need your help. We would love to spread the seeds of wellness all around the world. Will you assist us? You can subscribe below. You can subscribe in Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. We are everywhere. And we ask, would you be willing to actually spread this to others that you may know? who can actually be contributed with the tools and resources to bring more wellness into their life and into their bodies.